Yeah, good day. My name is Thomas Scheiber. I'm with Rector Product Management for the Nexus 9000 and the ACI product line. Uh, thanks for watching today. What I want to talk about is the APIC controller and how this actually uh, is differing from what you would expect from a typical network controller, what everybody's talking about. Uh, so let's just let me start here. The main points, and I will get to this in detail, is scale, policy, and resiliency, what the controller provides. But let me do a little bit uh, compare and contrast between what a traditional controller is doing in a networking world and what the uh, APIC controller from Cisco is doing, which stands for Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. Uh, typically, if you look at this, the idea of a controller is you have a network, and I have the symbol on both sides here, it's like a spine leaf architecture, I call it aggregation and, and tor switches that are connected. And a controller basically is the idea I can manage all of these together, right? And so what you traditionally see in, in the discussion around uh, where SDN started is, is this controller, you have a switch control plane maybe abstracted out and have it centralized in the controller, that's one thing. And quite frankly, actually most people are going away from that because they realize that doesn't scale that, that well. But the second one is you actually have the controller managing the configurations and the central point for all these different switches in your fabric. Uh, and they tend to be stateful. And what that really means is if you have to reconfigure your fabric, your controller is actually doing the heavy lifting, which means it's uh, translating what you want to change into what has to happen in terms of change of switch configuration and then pushes down the change configs to the different switches. Right? And that's what I have here. The switch config is getting pushed down from the controller into the switches. Uh, and then obviously if you have some uh, events going on, you're going to have the events coming back in the controller as probably the aggregation point for that as well. So sounds very uh, straightforward. So what's different with the APIC? Right? The main point really is what's different. At the controller level, what we do is we actually don't have stateful configurations. We only have stateless configuration. We call these policies uh, and, and profiles. And what we have there is basically a description of uh, what we call application network profiles. It defines the connectivity graph of points and who can talk with whom. And that has nothing to do really with what the switch configuration is for the individual switches. It's literally just a set of endpoint groupings and who can talk with whom. Right? And what we do actually, that controller is actually pushing down that policy. Instead of actually translating that at the controller level, we're pushing down the set of policies into the switches itself. And so the translation from what you want from a policy perspective to what really has to be configured on the switch is happening in the switch. And that is a huge difference because what it really does is, A, it takes the load off the controller, which is the central point where you really have the biggest scale requirements. It takes that load off, but not only that, by pushing it into the switch itself, you actually don't have to know state and uh, configuration history of the uh, switches at the controller level because you really have this done in the switch itself. The switches operate literally like an autonomous switch as they do today and we know that scales well in a routed environment. So again, you push the uh, policy down, it sits here and I have a little green here, it's like you have a policy database literally in every one of the switches and whenever you know you need uh, a new attachment to the switch, let's say a server comes and connects, you actually see that you will take your policy you have, you will translate that, oh, I need to configure, let's say, an ACL route entry on the switch, and you will do this dynamically on the fly, right? And that is very, very easy and very nicely scaling because if you now think through this, if you add more switches to this, right, you don't really have to touch your controller. You don't have to understand new templates like you have on this side. Oh, I have a new switch. What's the template for configuration I need to push? None of this, right? Because you just keep adding the switch, you push down the policy, and locally in the switch you have the policy and you do the translation into what the configuration is. And obviously when the, the, the endpoint moves around, uh, you're going to adjust automatically. You deconfigure the switch, the endpoint moves to the next switch, you reconfigure the switch. All of this happens dynamically. Very, very nicely done in terms of scale out. So, you can see there's a difference clearly, right, in terms of how do you scale and where do you actually do the, the translation of policy connectivity graph, what service you actually want to have uh, into what the real, what we call the, the concrete uh, configuration of the switches. We do it decentralized because it scales. Uh, there is another point uh, which has to do with resiliency. As you might imagine here, the model here, uh, if you have to add a new switch, right, you need to go back up to the controller because the controller net needs to push down the configs. In this model, you don't have that, right? You actually could, and I'm not suggesting you should, but you could in theory turn off the controller because you have the profiles down here. You add a new switch, you detect this, and you basically configure uh, correctly what the, uh, what the uh, configuration needs to be. Uh, so that's the, the configuration concept going down. Now, uh, what I haven't really talked about was the other way up. 
um, and this is the day two, what people normally look at as the day two operations. The benefit of this one here of having policy local on the, on the devices, I actually can get uh, information back from the switches that are contextualized uh, around application, groupings, tenants. And so what I do have here in this model versus that model, I actually can get the status information back from my network fabric, and I do have this contextualized, which allows me to dynamically roll up, uh, not just saying, oh, my switch fabric is good or bad, in a good state or bad state. I actually can roll it up at the granularity of a tenant, of an application, or of an application tier, and saying, oh, let's say for this particular application, my network state is healthy. Uh, very much possible here, dynamically. Very, very hard to do on this side, actually. Very, very hard to do because you have to have the contextualization done out of band uh, at the controller, even one layer up. And so, as you can see, uh, multiple advantages of going from what I would call a traditional controller model to the EPIC model, where we're really talking about increasing the scale, using policies and pushing policies down into the fabric and translating them locally and increasing resiliency by doing so. Uh, with that said, uh, I hope uh, you got a little bit of an idea of the differences between the controller approach. Uh, if you want to see more information, I encourage you to go to the uh, URL on the bottom of the page. Thanks a lot and have a good day.